That looks better. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the show where I talk about movies and stuff. And I'm actually going to be talking about some movies today. Um, every movie that I've seen in 2018 that was from 2018. So let's crack this shell open. So the first one I want to talk about is Maze Runner, The Death Cure. I hadn't seen the other Maze Runner movies, so I was kind of going in blind when it came to this one. I had no idea what to expect. I actually got a pretty good movie out of it. It was a decent experience, except I went with some girls from my class that were really loud and really obnoxious and made it actually difficult to watch the movie, but that's not the movie's fault, so. Um, it was it was decent. It was, it was a good time. No alcohol required. I liked it. Uh, that's really all I have to say about it. Wrinkle in Time. That movie was terrible. Horrendous. The CGI is mediocre, the writing is terrible, the acting is stiff. It doesn't give you a chance to believe what you're seeing on screen before it moves on to something else completely ridiculous. So by the time you understand that tessering is a possibility, the it is already possessing Michael Pena and is a freaking Pinocchio doll. It's just such a ridiculous show and I, I couldn't I couldn't get into it. That's all I really wanted to say about that, so I'm gonna move on. Now, uh Black Panther. Black Panther is a fine movie. It's meh, you know, it's okay. It's good, I guess, but it's not the second coming of the Messiah that all the black people are trying to make it seem like it is. And look at me, I can speak about black people. Um, it's not some sort of cultural movement, some sort of philosophical phenomenon that's supposed to change the world and remake the way that we see each other as people it doesn't do any of that. It's just a fun Marvel movie. And if that's all you went in expecting, then that's all you got out of it. If you went in expecting the Black Panther movement to be reborn, that's probably why you were talking about it. Like, that's what happened. Um, Now, Pacific Rim Uprising. That movie is so in inoffensively passable that it's just like, I kind of felt like I wasted my time watching it. You know, it's uh, it's okay. It's nowhere near as good as its, as its predecessor, and its sequel baits you so hard, and it's just, I don't care where you go from here. It was really stupid what you just showed me, and I really, I'm done with this franchise now. I can't. What you did with Charlie Day's character, it's a, it's a dumb idea. That was terrible. Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider was a movie. Definitely happened. I watched it. Um, I couldn't get into it. I don't know. And I've played a lot of the games especially the newer Square Enix ones, and I really enjoyed them. That's why I saw this movie in the first place. But, I don't know, it was just, it was very dull for me. It didn't, it didn't do much. I want to move on to uh, something that I, I thought was really interesting and really funny. Blockers. I thought Blockers was hilarious. I saw it with my friend Miggy. If you're watching, I doubt you are, but let me know in the comments. Um, it, was, it was unique. It was an interesting concept, and it was really well done. John Cena, I've heard he was in it, but I, I didn't see him anywhere. It's weird. I even heard he was one of the main characters. Couldn't see him. Ready Player One is another movie that's just okay. It falls a little hard on its face trying to um, get across its message of, you know, be unified. Don't try to take control of things. But when you're watching it, it's like, well, that's really convenient. That's also really convenient. Well, that's super convenient. That doesn't make any sense. It's so convenient. That's really convenient. And it's just becomes San Andreas levels of of, uh, of convenient and it takes away from the quality of the film because I was actually having a really good time up until I started noticing how convenient it was. I still think Ready Player One is a fine film. I just don't recommend that people rush to their nearest red boxes and rent it, you know. Truth or dare, poopy duty, a waste of my life force, my spirit, energy, and my time. If I'd paid to go see it, I would want my money back, but I watched it on a terrible bootleg a couple days ago. It was awful. Speaking of bootlegs, I don't usually do this, but I was definitely not going to go pay money to see Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, so I watched it on a, an, a truly awful bootleg. The quality of the bootleg didn't affect the script, though. Um, it was still really stupid, really cartoony. I didn't believe anything that was being shown to me on screen, and things happened for absolutely no reason. And uh, because of things like that, I really couldn't get into it. Now, here's a movie that I just saw, Sicario de la Soldado. Um, really well put together movie. Uh, I just did a review on it on the channel, so I don't really feel like I need to get too into detail about it. So I'm just gonna leave that where it is. Annihilation. Now, I don't really get the point. I didn't, I didn't really get all the hate that came to this movie. 
when it first came out. Maybe it's because I've never read the book, so I didn't really hold it to any sort of standard. But I was enjoying myself. I was having a good time. I kind of felt the same way watching Annihilation that I felt watching Ex Machina. Like, there was definitely a point there that they were trying to get across. And they did it fairly well without reliance on pop and circumstance too much. It was it was very in the narrative, in the storytelling. They got what they were trying to get across, across very well. And uh, it, all, it all worked for me. I don't know. Maybe I'm just too optimistic, but... Anyone who's been on this channel for an extended period of time knows that that's not the case, so maybe this is just a fluke. Moving on. Deadpool 2, that's the one I really couldn't remember that I saw. Um, it's fine, I mean, it's not a movie that takes itself too seriously, so of course the quality is going to be a bit lower than it would be in other superhero movies that came out, but overall the best thing about it is Josh Brolin, and I, I feel that way about every Josh Brolin movie I've seen this year. And, um, I don't know, I think it's well done, it's well acted, but the CGI is really bad sometimes and the storytelling is really weak. Now, the movies that I haven't seen because I just refuse to is actually a pretty short list. Incredibles 2 and Solo A Star Wars Story. I just don't think those two are worth my time, so I'm just skipping them entirely. That being said, that's only part one of this, uh, 2018 A Year in Cinema type thing that I'm doing. So uh, stay tuned for part two, where I talk about the movies that are coming up for the rest of the year that I'm really excited about seeing. Uh, that being said, if it's your birthday while watching this, happy birthday to you. If you sneeze during this video, bless you. Uh, and I will see you tomorrow with my Ant-Man review. I hope you guys don't tear me limb from limb over it. Uh, see you guys.